This video is sponsored by APEAK. What's up everyone, Karu here from iTennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we're going to talk about a topic that we get a lot of requests about. It's not, there's not gonna be a lot of tennis in this, in this video, to be honest. It's going to be more of like a talking video, sharing experiences and things like that. But the topic of this video is, like the title said, dealing with match pressure, mat, mat, pre-match nerves, and anxiety. That's something I think a lot of amateur players and junior players struggle with. And to be honest, it's not just them. It's pretty much every player uh, at whatever level they're dealing with that. Before we begin, let me just say I'm not a sports psychologist at all. I don't have any formal training in, 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 the, in that area, but I've been playing tennis for over 20 years and I've been playing tournaments my entire life pretty much. So um, I have a lot of experience dealing with that. Um, good, good experiences, negative experiences. Uh, so just making sure I, I throw that out there and before anyone starts saying, you shouldn't be talking about this, so you you know, we don't have proper training or whatever. So. Okay, so match nerves, match anxiety, however you wanna call it. It's, it's not a great feeling, right? It's like very annoying to feel like you're, we're training well and playing well and coming into maybe like a tournament or a match thinking that you're going to play a good match, uh, that you're confident, confident about your strokes, but those nerves just never seem to settle and you just can perform um, at the level you're expecting. However, whatever that level is, my, you know, if you're very high level, if you're just starting, and more often than not, bad performances stem from nerves and anxiety and never feeling like you're settled mentally into the match. You know what to do with your body. Your body knows what it has to do. Uh, but sometimes your mind gets in the way of that. And that's something that is really frustrating and it's hard to, to deal with, especially when you're just starting to play tournaments and learning how to you know navigate the match. Just There's so many things that are happening. Uh, it can become a little bit overwhelming. So a few common reasons that you might be anxious or feeling nervous before a match. I think number one, and this is going to sound like a cliche, but you're just human. Everyone feels nerves. You can talk about any professional athlete. I've, you know, I've been traveling around with someone who's just won two Grand Slams, and trust me, it, it hasn't been just smooth sailing mentally. There's there's tough days that we you know we have to overcome, and the same happened back when I played. I I felt you know anxious. I felt nerves. I you know had the yip sometimes on some strokes, and that's just normal, you know, there's very few people that can navigate through those things uh, without feeling any nerves. I think even the most confident people that you know are still, you know, feeling nerves for whatever the reason is, like maybe you just don't want to lose to someone who is weaker than, your, than you, or you, you, again, your mind is playing a, little, a few tricks with you at this point, but it's, you got to kind of accept that you're going to feel those things and you don't want to try to fight them as much. You want to try to like work around them and feel like um, you can still compete when you're feeling those things. Another reason that you might be feeling a lot of nerves and anxiety before playing, especially tournaments, is because you just don't have experience playing those kind of events and being in that situation. And I've been doing this since I was five. You know, I've been playing tournaments since I was eight. I've played countless matches through my life and I remember the feeling of anxiety most of them but I've learned how to you know kind of deal with them and how to maybe start the match a certain way that helps me get through them and this is a problem I have even with some of my players that because you're so inexperienced and you haven't played that many events any match is too special and when every match is too special um, whatever the match is, like a first round match of your club, league, whatever it is, uh, it's going to be hard to perform. When you push, put too much into just that one match, um, it's going to be, to be really hard to perform. You always have a next week. You're always going to have a next chance, obviously, barring any injuries and things like that. So don't make that the tournaments or the matches too special. Like they should be actually fun. Like you, the pressure that you're feeling for, um, you know, before a match, and it's something that I will talk about a little bit in, later in the video, should be actually exciting. It's like, the, it's good anxiety. It's, it's going to like get you going instead of like, kind of like bring you down. So don't put too much emphasis on, on 
any match or any tournament. Um, try to at least have a little bit more fun. And with time, with your experience, playing, 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 just play more, play more, play more, uh, you're gonna learn how to deal with that a little bit better. Another reason, another reason that you might be struggling with this is that we hardly put as much work as we should in our mental strength. Like I think we, we go on the court, we hit a lot of forehands and we do fitness. If you're sort of in that level of doing fitness, but no one is really putting the thought of, okay, I actually need to train my mental side as well. It's, it's complicated. It can be expensive. Um, and our mind is tricky. It's like a very, you know, I, you know, try to read a lot about this and you, the brain it's often not on our side. <laughs> he kind of, you know, wants to find ways to make things harder. So, you know, finding ways to train our minds could be through meditation. It could be through a lot of things. Um, it has to be part of the daily routine as well. I think we, we are not putting as much emphasis on, on that side of the training and we just expect that magically, we're just not gonna feel any pressure. We're not gonna feel any nerves. We're not gonna feel any anxiety. We're just not gonna feel anything. We're just going to be peak performance, Novak Djokovic clutch. And it's just not the way it is. Yes, even a guy like Novak or like, you know, the guys that have to constantly, you know, be at peak performance and deal with pressure of winning every tournament, they're having to work on their mental strength as well because uh, trust me, tennis is so mentally taxing. You can tell, you know, I'm on the tour and traveling on the tour now seeing players. Man, it's tough. It's not easy out here and it's not easy at any level in tennis. So you got to make sure you still, you're working on, with your, on your mind and you're working on that skill as well. It's not just uh, physical and technical. It's also mental, tra mental training. So here are some ways you can fix your mental weight. Yo, what's up, dude? This happened again, man. I keep training, training super hard, and and I keep choking matches. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm putting all the work on the court that I can, but, like, I just keep losing these matches that I shouldn't be losing. Well, have you been training your mind as well? What are you talking about? I mean, the same amount of work that you're putting into your strokes and fitness, you should be putting into your mind as well. But I can't afford a sports psychologist. It's too expensive. Well, have you tried this app called APEAK? No, what's that? It's a great app, dude. It's specifically designed for tennis players to help them create positive mental habits, build stronger character, and increase their performance on the court. Oh, really? It does everything through an app? How does it do that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so, all right. So we partnered up with AP. This is a really cool app. Uh, I'm really excited for this partnership because I think this is something that was missing for tennis players. APEAK is a new app that I think is going to help a lot of tennis players. It was designed by someone who played tennis, but also went to school for sport, sports psych and understands uh, what you need to do on a daily basis to train uh, your mind and, and build mental strength. And the daily mental training currently works in three stages with pre-match visualization, post-match reflection, and post-match vi visualization as well. Or post-practice, it could be for matches or for practice, and you can track uh, your progress. So here's how it works. So stage number one is pre-match or practice visualization. So for example, let's say today I have a match versus a weaker opponent, and I'm a bit nervous, a bit anxious about playing this weaker opponent. I will choose the weaker opponent prompt and listen to it before playing. So after my match or practice, I go back to stage number two which is post-match or practice reflection. So you've got two boxes in which you can, you're gonna write what went well that day and what went bad. So I'll write what went well. Let's say I was hitting my forehand well, my serve really well that day, I went to the net well or something like that. And I'll write what went bad. So let's say I lost a match where um, I served for it and I, you know, it was a close match and just kind of choked. That's something that a lot of players struggle with. When I write that, the, the cool part is that the app's AI will recommend a post-match vi visualization exercise tailored to what went bad in that specific day. So let's say I couldn't close out the match, I'll write that, and it will give me these prompts, which is really cool. It kind of caters to what I did badly that day. And then comes step three, which is listening to one of those prompts and kind of put me in a good 
frame of mind, even though things were bad, um, helps me put in the right frame of mind and you know be okay with the bad things that I, that I did. And there's, again, a m bunch of prompts in there that can help you in many different scenarios. Try APEC out. I'm excited for this partnership. They're going to be, um, I'm going to talk about them more and more in the channel. Um, maybe I'll do a full review of the app if that's something you want to see. Uh, leave a comment down below. But let's go back to the video and talk a little bit more about how can you improve your mental strength and deal with those matched nerves and anxiety. So number one is just building a good routine. And I'm not just talking about the hit that you're gonna have or the warm up that you're gonna have off court. Um, you could obviously find what works best for you. Maybe it's a longer hit, there's a shorter hit, um, a little more activation footwork outside uh, the court. Like you can, you can find ways, play around with ways that on and off the court are gonna help. But also like how can you maybe sh like shift the focus from the match to something else. Are, do you wanna be hyper-focused into the match? Do you wanna sort of like forget about it and let your, let your mind kind of think about other things? I, you know, it can be listening to music. I actually personally used to listen to audiobooks before matches just to like kind of forget about the match a little bit, forget about the, you know, sometimes you're thinking about it too much. You're like, what am I gonna do with this and that? Like you already know what you're gonna do. There's nothing else you're gonna learn. It's just getting in, in there and competing. So I think good routines, with eating, with just building something that like you can't really blame anything else besides, hey, I got in, I got out, maybe I lost, but like my routine was good and I, I keep doing that and keep finding the one that's gonna work for you. I think that's incredibly important uh, for any player at any level. Number two is working on mental strength as much as you work on your tennis game and your fitness, whatever it is. Um, obviously, I just did a little <laughs> ad for a peak. Uh, and that's a great tool that you can use, but you can also find something else that might help you. It can be a sports psychologist. Uh, it can be anything that really puts you in a good state of mind. It could be doing yoga. It can be doing uh, meditation. There's, there's all sorts of ways that can help you strengthen your mind. Um, this is something that is new to me as well. It's not something that I was doing when I was young. I wish I was doing when I was younger. I think it would have helped me a lot. So building that kind of um, mental strength through training, it's really, really important. I think you just, it's almost like a must have for any player. Number three is actually playing a lot more. Play a lot of events, play a lot of matches. Forget too much about drilling and things like that. Just play a lot because you are going to put yourself in this, that pressure situation, that anxiety, situa anxiety situation more often. And the more often you're in that situation, the more you can learn. It's like, oh, I went for this shot. It doesn't work when I'm feeling pressure. I went for this shot. Oh, this shot is really, has really worked. Uh, I think Gil, Gil Simone just had a, uh, just wrote a book. And in that book, he talks about the, you know, how kind of French players are labeled chokers and things like that. But what he mentioned is that guys like Novak and Federer and Rafa, they really know who they are during those pressure situations and they know exactly the shots they, they can go for, that they can trust all the time. And obviously to a, obviously at a smaller level, this is something that you need to learn from your game. I knew exactly what I could do in those situations. I wasn't the guy who was going to, you know, at five, four, 40, 30 serving for it, just going to probably ace someone. Probably not, Hope, hopefully, but probably not. I knew how I wanted the point to be played and and this is only going to happen if you really, really uh, commit to playing a lot and, and feeling uncomfortable. It, it, you need to learn how to feel uncomfortable and play when you're uncomfortable. And there's n no really way out of it. You're always going to feel pressure. You're always going to feel anxiety. But the more you play, the more you put yourself into to that, to those situations, the more you're going to learn about your game how you can play in those situations, how you shouldn't play in those situations, and then you can work on those things. You work backwards. So like, oh, I played, I did this badly, I can go back and actually work on that. And the last point I wanna make is have fun. Um, I had this, the experience of, 
you know, having players where they almost enjoy practice more than they enjoy matches because once they get to the match and they're feeling pressured, they lose and it's just frustrating because you're putting all these hours into the court and you're losing the matches and it's, it, you can tell they're not really having fun when they're, when they're competing and you, there's a clear difference of players that enjoy competition also kind of more than practice and vice versa and competition should be fun competition is fun Com it's just the reason why we we kind of do it obviously for more amateurs that maybe just do it for the exercise i understand it but for you know players that reach out and it's like how can i deal with this you're obviously trying to win more matches but you gotta enjoy that you gotta you gotta make you know almost like a little kid for me i'm always like a little kid when i you know i trained certain things and i was able to do it on the court i'm like oh this, this was great so you got to be able to have fun on the court as well and don't think it's like you know it's like, oh, i just gonna job i have to win this match blah blah, blah. so really find ways that you can feel like you're enjoying that your time on the court that you're actually having fun on the court it's going to help you a lot oh and of course breathing breathing is so important I think a good way to sometimes deal with mesh nerves is like grunting because it's going to make you real exhale and then you have to inhale and you're going to be breathing. So sometimes we like hold that tension in so much and we're so tense like, like this without you know, breathing. Make sure you're hitting and you're breathing and you're taking your time in between points to breathe to, 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 to kind of like, you know, the, the past is the past, the future is the future. The only thing you can really control is the right now, the next point. Um, breathing is so so important there's all sorts of breathing techniques I'm not a pro in that in any way so you can probably I'll try to Google or YouTube some that I, I think are, would be good I'll try to link it down below but breathing is so important it's so important it's again something that I didn't really focus as much uh, growing up and even like during my pro career but I think it's really really important for your game it's probably the easiest thing that you can do and there's massive massive benefits so Work on your breathing, deep breaths. It can be just through the nose, nose and mouth, mouth, whatever it is, but try to breathe more through the nose. And again, exhale when you hit, grunt, do whatever, but like let that air go so you can bring more oxygen in. It's going to help you a lot. So that's it for this video. I know it was a, you know, a little bit long and boring, just me talking, no tennis, and this is supposed to be a tennis channel, but this is something that we get a lot of requests about it, and it's something that it's a subject that is hard that you know we we all deal with it sometimes we don't talk about it and we, you know, we just internally struggle um, but there are tools out there there are ways to help you do this um, obviously like I, I talked about in the video a peak is a great app is designed specifically for for tennis players I wouldn't be selling it if I wouldn't be supporting it if I didn't believe in it and I think it's a great tool so use the link down below a peak um, and use the code MYTENNISHQ, all caps, you get 20% off if you do eventually buy the yearly subscription. Um, we get a little bit of a commission, so help us also um, use our tennis warehouse and Amazon links down below to help us make a little bit of money. Uh, it's not bad. And buy our merch. Don't forget our merch. Let us know in the comments below if there's, you know, maybe we start a discussion down below, like what is your technique to deal with match pressure? I think, you know, each person has their own way. You might help someone else in the community. So leave a link down, uh, leave a comment down below about your technique. Looking forward to see, seeing that. And I'll see you guys on the next one.